What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we're going to take a look at Scareglow. It's November 23rd. The series is out. I am going to binge the entire part two tonight before going to bed. I'm going to dodge social media also because I don't want any spoilers, man. I like to enjoy the art for the first time as much as possible, which is why for the most part, since I started doing reviews, I don't watch reviews anymore until after I do my review, you know? Not because of any kind of like bougie kind of nonsense, but just because of kind of like, it's one of those things where when you were a kid, you know, and, and, and your friend got the toy or the video game before you did, you didn't want him to defeat the first level and see the first master and have him spoil it for you. You wanted to wait till you got home and played your video game. And you didn't want to check out the figure in his house because you knew you were going to get yours that same night. So you wanted to wait until you got yours. You know, it's that kind of experience where I knew that my delivery was coming. And when I know my deliveries are coming, I don't watch reviews until after I enjoy checking out my toy for the first time by myself. And, you know, in this case, I'm by myself right now in my room, but I'm sharing it with you. So it's like the best of both worlds, kind of. Um, so that now that that's out of the way, uh, Scareglow, the retail issue. And let's take a look at that artwork. This is beautiful. I love purple, man. I think purple is gorgeous. And there are so many gradients in purple and you can do so much with it. And it just is it just rocks. It's interesting how you know villains tend to be attached to purple a lot, despite the fact that in, in history, historically, it was attached to uh, royalty, uh, and primarily because it was such an expensive ink or tint to uh, produce. You know, so it was exclusively for the filthy rich and royalty, and nowadays it seems to be the color of choice for villains. <laughs> but this is a beautiful piece of artwork, and I didn't realize that the the exclusive. SDCC version of, of Scareglow didn't have artwork on the side because it came in a really unique box. All right, so another look at the back. Very, very cool. We'll try to uh, copy that pose when we do our dynamic poses in play. Scareglow, evil ghost of Skeletor. Go ahead and read that bio. Very nice. You can go ahead and check out my Fisto review. Please do so. It's always fun for me to share, and I love hearing from you guys. Drop some comments if you're interested. And if you're not interested, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Scareglow. I'm probably going to check out uh, Andra next, and I'll leave Stinker for last. No particular reason. Scareglow. Evil Ghost of Skeletor. Let's get him out of the box. All right, pretty cool right here. I thought it'd be nice to start out with the pose that you see on the back of the box. So let's take a quick comparison there and you be the judge. All right, life imitating art or art imitating art, if you will. Pretty nice, I'm feeling it. All right. So Scareglow, yes. Let's take a look and see what we've got going on here. Other than this frightening pose, we've got a lot of stunning purple. That's the first thing that strikes me about this figure. And I also tested out the glow-in-the-dark feature while he was in the package. You want to take a look at that? Let's take a look at that real quick. Ooh, yes. We have the glow-in-the-dark feature. All right. So Scareglow is winning. Scareglow is definitely winning. Uh, let's go ahead and give him a once over of articulation since we have him in this pose. Let's talk about how we got him there. And then let's admire some of the deco on this guy because he really is a really remarkable figure. He, he, he is eye catching and he stands out just because of the character. But in terms of his presentation as a revelation figure, he is a great addition to the Scareglow family. So definitely, yes. In terms of articulation, we've got the peg in the ankle that allows for forward and back motion. We've activated it here in the rocker. We've activated some of the boot cut. We've activate, activated the double jointed knee, the pinless double jointed knee. And we've activated some of the thigh cuts. And this is a great figure to show 
Thigh cut articulation because you see the misalignment of the bone that I needed to do in terms of twisting the thigh to get him into that pose so that that foot could be flat on the floor. So really cool there. Very nice demonstration. We're also utilizing the hip hinge and they can give you a pretty perfect split. The cloth, as you can see, the plastic cloth here, as you saw, was super soft and is not going to encumber or get in the way at all of articulating the legs for this gentleman here. So very nice, very, very nice so far in the lower body. We've got the cut at the waist and we've got the upper diaphragm cut. That's great for kind of like tilting them side to side and he can hold that. And they have a little bit of a twist, but it doesn't hold. That twist a little bit in the diaphragm always returns back to center. It's not an action punch, but it does return back to center. So interesting little note there. In the arms and upper body, I actually rotated the hinge completely upwardly. So you can see the hinge here. And I actually just kind of like twisted it all the way up so that I could bend a little bit further down to get these arms articulated that way. So some great range there, but you can bring it back down. Twist the other one in, bring it back down. Whoops, spun a little bit too much. And we can bring our arms in. Very nice. They've got the cut at the bicep, the penless double jointed elbows that give you tremendous, tremendous reach. Look at that. That is great it's for, for sword play and sword poses or staff or scepters or what have you. Very, very nice. We have the rotation at the wrist. And the hands have the horizontal hinges. So with the thumb upward, they can go side to side. Really nice. Our cabeza, or I don't know how you say skull in Spanish. Cranium? Maybe it's cranium. His cranium is, I have to, I have to verify that, right? I can't just put out misinformation. All right, so I'll, in, I'll insert text in case I'm wrong. But for the purposes of it, his cabeza made of skull it can give you some great movement, right? So you're going to look down really well. The cape here is going to interfere with his upward range, but then I'll just... Oh, actually, no. He's just not going to get a tremendous amount of upper range because the skull is touching the back of the neck. Okay, cool. Glad I checked that. But down we've got, well, up. He's going to give you pretty much a straightforward look. But I guess with the diaphragm and some bending, you can get a little bit of up going on. Pretty nice. Very nice. In terms of deco, let's check this dude out. Let's check this dude out right off of the back. And in fact, you know what? Let's get right to the... I guess kind of like the comparison, the theme comparison, and we'll do some dynamic poses in play maybe after that. But since I want to compare both figures anyway, and I want to just admire the deco differences on both of them, might as well take that opportunity now instead of kind of like wasting time, right? So we're going to bring out the SDCC 2021 exclusive release. And yes, I get it. It's from Mattel Creations. Yes, I get it. It was released during the PowerCon 2021 event. And I was able to pick it up via Mattel Creations. Very nice. And let's just take a look at these two guys and see what we've got going on here. Very nice. All right. PowerCon 2021, retail release, green bones, yellow bones, green head, yellow translucent head. Even though this is a neon green, but it, it does seem to be made of the same translucent plastic. It's just that it's a, a deeper color. Very, very cool. The belts are identical. The gauntlets or bracers in this case are identical. The boots. Are 
are identical. I just had to make sure because they kind of look a little different, but they're not. They're identical. The wraps underneath the belt, the molds are identical. The colors are not. Uh, this is a different purple. Interesting. And you see what I mean about purple? What makes purple so beautiful? Just a slight variation there. And they're both beautiful purples. Very cool. I forget what this piece here is called on the cape, so forgive me for that. But they're identical. They both have a gray paint. That's not... Actually, no, it's a silver metallic. Very cool. If we look at the bone structure on the left arms, identical. On the left side, identical. Oh no, not identical. Slight variation in the paint application. So the upper part of the bone on the shoulders is the same. And on the bicep, the bone is broken in different places. So check that out. Get those bones aligned there so we can see that a little better. There we see it. The breakage is different. Here, the lower part of the bone is broken to the front, and here, the lower part of the bone is broken to the back. Interesting. And then we have the same paint application there on the forearms. Very nice. Same hands. And that could definitely be used for holding the very large staff, spear, weapon that I don't know the name of, <laughs> which I'll bring out right now, perfect timing. This weapon here, this is the retail release and the PowerCon Mattel Creations release has uh, some paint ornamentation on it that's slightly different. Uh, but this is the weapon and it would fit perfect in either hand. So that makes sense. In terms of other accessories, since we're here, the retail release also comes, and you could tell the accessories apart because of the colors, right? This is yellow, this is green. Also comes with the ginormous thumb. I mean, the super mega ginormous thumb. So that's just really interesting. But this could be really helpful for, you know, kind of like lifting up enemies and holding them in that hand. So from that standpoint, I could see it's useful. He also comes with the fist. Nice paint work, nice clean lines on my, my paint. Very cool, happy about that. And all right, let's turn these guys around. Let's take a look at these capes. Interesting thing about this cloth is that it sticks to itself sometimes at the, at the ends. So that's interesting, but whatevs. So the intent is the same on the retail release to have a really wide spread at the bottom with the cape but whoops on the exclusive release the wire can help that feature just seem much more pronounced and the cape is obviously cut to meet the ends of the wire whereas here it is shaped to fall and then kind of like flare out a little bit or bunch up a little bit on the bottom on its own, you know, because of gravity. Uh, so very cool, very cool. They really look great together. So yeah, really nice. A nice little stand up comparison there of these two guys together to just kind of like get a glimpse of the differences in them. Uh, now that I've had them both out and under the light for at least a couple of minutes, I'm gonna kill the lights and let's see what the glow looks like. I'm gonna imagine that this figure, just because it's yellow and it's a little bit more translucent, I'm gonna imagine that this figure glows brighter than this figure just because it's a deeper color green. Let's see if my bet is correct. One, and go on two. Oh, nice. 
Very cool. This never ceases to impress. So definitely the retail release has the more brilliant luminescent head sculpt in the dark, but you can still clearly see them both. Let me try to zoom in there. Nice, I'm feeling that. Very cool, very, very cool. Let's get the lights back on. Bam. Hey, why so serious? Very nice. Let me get these guys over here. This is a nice little close-up shot of these bros. Let's get them. There we go. Super chill. Super chill. Snag one there while we're at it. All right, let's try to take a look at... Excuse me, sir. I'm going to move you to the side. Let's try to take a look at some dynamic poses in play with our friend, Scareglow. Nice. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. Very nice. Very nice. Subtle, but still implies action and movement. Very cool. Scareglow is just a stunning figure, you know. It's going to be hard to pose him in a manner or position him in a manner that, that isn't complimentary, you know. Um, so yeah, let's try to get another action pose going here. All right. Yes. Winning double handed pose on the staff. I forget what the name of this specific, is it a halberd? I think that's the name of it. I forget what the name is. I'll do the research, of course, after I do the video that, that I want to share with you guys. Um, so very cool. Very, very cool. I'm feeling it. Look at that, just a subtle change in angle and you get another really great picture. Look at that, very nice with the halberd, I believe it is, across his body. Super cool, let's check out another dynamic pose with this really cool fig. This kind of looks like an unconventional fighting pose, but it's more of a defensive stance using the halberd spear staff that he has here. And I really like the fact that I can articulate the figure into this position while he maintains the grasp on both ends of the staff. Very, very nice. Great articulation. Look at the lines there. Look at the curves. I mean, that is just really, really awesome looking. Outstanding. Great, great fun. Let's try to get another cool pose out of our friend here. Yeah, because of course, you know, I had to always... I have to always do the iconic pose. You know, you got a melee weapon, you got a staff, you're, you're, you're a magic wielder, you still got to get into the iconic pose. Everybody, everybody has to get into the iconic pose. <laughs> and Scareglow is in the iconic pose. And thank you, Scareglow. Nicely done. Great lines, great colors. Another great fig, another great fig. 2021, despite everything going on in the world in general and just, you know, with shipping delays and everything going on, uh, it has really been a great year. E even also with all the nonsense and, and, and bogus controversy over part one of the Revelation series, uh, 2021 just continues to be a remarkable year for artists and collectors and toy makers and... The future right now is as bright as it has ever been, maybe. We might not be seeing the beginning of a new renaissance in toys, a new golden era in toys. I definitely think that's where things are right now. And I'm happy to be a part of it. And I'm having a ton of fun uh, sharing as I experience or re-experience the joy of collecting toys just now as an adult. I hope you guys are able to keep coming back and let's keep on sharing experiences together for many years to come. Until next time, everybody, take care.